Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Professor Wayne Pitchford and uh, I've been working with Greg Popperwell to analyse uh, some of his data. Greg's a person who I've known for over 20 years and one of the key things here in the, this program is that what Greg started doing very early on was he knew that genomics was coming and so he collected hair samples with hair follicles on those samples. He collected those samples on every single animal born in the program. And so it provided a resource that was able then to be able to utilise for how we're utilising this program now. Here's an example of all the animals that have been genotyped and how they group together in breed. So we had 1,104 animals that were actually genotyped. The animals were weighed at birth, they were weighed 200, 400 and 600 days of age and then as mature cows because the program puts a significant emphasis on limiting mature cow weight while maximising early growth. There's also ultrasound measurements of eye muscle area, fat depth at the P8 and the rib site, intramuscular fat percentage as well so that meat quality can be improved at the same time as overall productivity. In the bulls the scrotal size has been recorded and in the females fertility has been recorded and we've only analysed that from those that have been naturally mated. Those the way that fertility has been recorded is as days to calving, but we did a couple of things different. We separated out the trait from heifers and mature cows, and the heifers, they join normally at around about 15 months of age, but in a tropical environment, putting pressure on that young reproduction we see is a really important trait. With the genotyping, we had 29,000 SNPs on 1,119 animals. The data is sound, it's been well recorded, well grouped up and well described. The other thing to touch on here is the heterozygosity effect. So this is like saying well, what traits did hybrid vigour or heterosis actually affect and significant for all of the growth traits in also for eye muscle area, also significant for intramuscular fat. So not so much for fat depth but for marbling, positive effect on marbling, positive effect on eye muscle area, positive effect on growth and then reproduction, an effect on heifer days to calvings and on mature days to calving. So what that's saying is every extra percentage of heterozygosity reduced days to calving by over two days. That's had a really big effect. And the breeding program will continue to use a combination of breeding the ideal mix of breeds, genotyping all animals, phenotyping key traits, continue to use mate allocation, use the optimization. Greg has, has been a licensed user of TGRM for a long time and works very, very closely with clients. And so the aim in working with clients is actually to be able to capture client data on reproduction and carcass traits, genotype those animals, feed that into the breeding program to be able to increase the accuracy of the breeding program and also help the clients feel a sense of ownership about the bulls that they're buying because it's their data that has actually gone into influencing those bulls. So this is a pretty exciting program to be a part of. It's uh, fantastic to work with someone innovative like Greg Popperwell and Katrina, be able to use the latest breeding technologies to breed cattle, have higher reproductive rates than others in industry. The productivity of these animals in the tropical zones is tremendous and really confident that we're going to continue to improve that productivity over time. I'm confident that the people will see that this is a breeding program that's worthwhile being a part of. The unique thing about the Popper World Composites is that many, many years ago, Greg was challenged to um, treat collecting DNA samples as like a stamp collection. And so he started religiously collecting DNA samples on every single animal in his herd. I don't know of any other breeder that's done that. And um, uh, not only has he done that, he's now invested in genotyping those and every animal now will be genotyped to be able to, to get that information. As well as that, he's recorded good information on the traits. He's recorded um, how hairy the coat is, whether it's slick or hairy coat, whether the animals are polled or not. Um, the, um, for the bull, young bulls, the, not only the scrotal size, but he's had semen testing done on them. So there's a whole lot of characteristics on the semen. There's the females um, religiously recording when the bulls, when they go with the bull, when they carve, and um, uh, those sort of things. Will, you know, the key key traits that are affecting. Um, profitability of animals uh, in, in the, the uh, tropical regions of Australia and, uh, and, and by recording those animals and, and combining that with the genotype information we're, we're able to accurately estimate breeding values on those animals. So there's a, there's a package here of um, working with a 
with an experienced cattleman, passionate cattleman, having the genomics where um, the, Greg and Katrina had the foresight to store the data, work uh, in collecting that DNA, investing in the genomics, investing the, you know, significant amounts of money in getting all animals genotyped, using that information to then build up the really good genetic relationships between all of the animals in the program, some distantly related, some really closely related. This is a breeding program which is not just about selling more bulls, this is a breeding program that could potentially have uh, quite a wide impact on the industry.